Hi, my name is Julia Furlan, and I'm a podcast host and reporter. You've probably heard me on NPR or BuzzFeed News, but enough about me. I want to start this course by introducing you to my dear friend, Meg. Meg is the person in my life who I'd say is the number one most creative problem solver I've ever seen. Like that time when she lost her voice over Thanksgiving, so she taught herself to spell in sign language so she could communicate. She's the kind of person who rescues a typewriter from the curb and then sounds this level of excited when learning how to fix it. I had a problem. I wanted to solve it. I didn't know how, but then I figured out how. And I was like, oh, now like now I have this broken typewriter. It's just like a box of problems. Okay, back to me. I'd like to say that one of the most impressive learning challenges I can flaunt is that I speak a lot of languages. I speak Portuguese and English and French and Spanish and Italian. But the last new language I learned was a real long time ago, gotta say. And honestly, I really want to be the kind of person who can take a little bit of that Meg energy into my life. Okay, so I did not know anything about French seams three weeks ago. But basically, it's like, you know, normally when you make, when you sew two pieces of fabric together, you kind of put them together. with. It's not just about typewriters or sign language. I think the thing that impresses me most is that Meg knows how to learn. It's like, oh, you don't know how to sew a French seam or what the heck a French seam even is? Well, let's figure it out. But it looks so crazy beautiful when you do it. I mean, I just, yeah, I was was very excited about that. And then bam, Meg has a red shirt with fancy French seams that she taught herself how to make. I understand that learning something new is intimidating. It challenges us emotionally. It challenges us mentally. And honestly, I don't think people talk about how hard that can be, which is why I'm here, and that's hopefully why you're here too. We all want to be lifelong learners. We want to bring a little bit of that Meg energy into the rest of the things that we do, you know? Now, before we dive in, I want to talk about why it's so important to keep learning today, like today, today. Here's the thing. We're releasing this course in April 2020, And a lot has changed since we started making it. Schools will remain closed for the remainder of the school year. Learning uh, is still occurring. Distance learning, online learning, but we are... I'm currently under a comforter in my bedroom, as opposed to in a studio, for example. But here's the good news. Exploring a new subject or skill can help you escape the anxiety of right now by helping you enter a flow state. Maybe you've experienced this before. I feel like I've had this happen to me before. You're writing or playing basketball or practicing the piano, and then all of a sudden you look at the clock and wait, where did those two hours go? When we're focused and engaged on doing something that we love, we sort of lose our sense of time. And that flow state triggers the release of dopamine in your brain. It's a chemical that helps you deal with stress and anxiety. And... It boosts your energy levels, and that can help your immune system. So yeah, learning can improve your literal, actual health. This knowable course is going to make it so that we can achieve the flow that comes with learning. And right off the bat, I want to address something that gets batted around a lot when it comes to learning. You know, that old thing about teaching an old dog new tricks or whatever? I am not calling anyone here an old dog, but... The basic idea is that our brains, I don't know, they stop being able to learn as well as we age, right? That old dog, new trick thing. And okay, as a person who has been trying to teach her parents how to set up their emails, I get where this is coming from. But the truth is that our brains can absorb remarkable amounts of information throughout our lives, no matter how old we are. The brain is really set up to allow lifelong learning. We are highly capable of forming new memories, learning new skills throughout the lifetime. That's David Friedman, and he's a professor of neuroscience at the University of Chicago. And here's another reason to keep learning. You'll feel better about yourself. One study by London Economics found that 80% of learners had improved self-confidence or self-esteem because of their learning. And that confidence had a ripple effect on how they served their community and how they managed their time. So your learning can basically improve your whole overall quality of life. Self-guided learning also helps you succeed at work. According to a report by the World Economic Forum, more than half of all employees will need reskilling and upskilling in the next three years. 
That's because more and more jobs are getting automated. So, you know, picking up a new skill could impress your boss and help you adapt in this brave new world. But learning isn't always easy. So throughout this course, we'll get advice from real experts who dig deep into the things that all learners struggle with, like um, procrastination, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if you've heard of it. You know, there's been a lot of people saying, well, it's laziness and it's poor time management, and it's not any of those things. It is actually driven by very irrational forces, namely our emotions and our mood. You'll get information for your life that you can actually use, like what to do when you're confronted with that terrifying situation. You know, you run into your kid's soccer coach's wife's uncle when they're waving at you and they're definitely going to interact with you. And then, oh, my God, is his name Dave? Is it Steve? Jojo? Marsha? Ben? Yep, that's right. We've got you covered. We'll hear from Yenja Wintersoul, who is an international grandmaster of memory. So you'll remember whatever his name is. Try to memorize it in terms of images. So say you meet someone called Rose, then you would try to remember that like, oh, she smells like a rose or she has like eyes that are as round as like a rosebud, etc. And so you kind of just make these associations. And we'll address the age old question of I just don't have time. There's so many things that you can pay attention to, and there are so many distractions that it's really not about managing time. I really think that we need to think about managing our priorities, our expectations, and our attention. And we'll see why you only need a few hours to get better at something. From Josh Kaufman, who literally wrote a book about it. This is um, an effect called the, the power law of learning. So when you don't know anything... It doesn't take very much time in order for you to, to see very dramatic skill improvements with just a few hours of practice. And you know, not everybody learns in the exact same way, which means we're going to address how you can learn no matter what kind of learning style you have. Here's Debbie Reber, who wrote a book about being differently wired. I think that is just a big societal shift we need to make and stop looking at neural differences as problems that we need to fix and instead start to think about, you know, what the gifts are. So by the end of this course, you'll walk away with three skills. One, you'll know how to learn more effectively. Two, you'll know how to structure your learning so that it actually gets done. And three, you'll have more Meg energy in your life, you know? You'll embrace being bad at things so that you can actually become better at them. Because we're taught that the things that you enjoy should be really, like, fluid and pleasurable. And if you're having a hard time, like, there's something that's bad about that. You know, you should be, like, you should have, like, an uncomplicated, positive relationship to the things that you do, the hobbies that you enjoy. But I think that there are certain things that, for me, like, I enjoy struggling with. And certain things that I know that it's, good to be bad at those things because it means that if you care enough about eventually learning how to do them, like you're going to go through this experience where you're bad at it and then suddenly you're good at it. And that's so rewarding. Do you feel like it's reward? What do, what do you get out of it? It's not that it's the accomplishment of doing it. It's that I really enjoy the focus. I really enjoy thinking really hard about the thing in front of me and the thing that I'm doing. Not because I like want to like shut out the world or whatever, but just because I really enjoy that state of focus mm -hmm. and that flow. That flow Meg is talking about, you can unlock that wherever you learn, whether you're at home or you're in a classroom. And lucky for you, Knowable gives you access to online teachers and courses just like this one that are going to help you. So be sure to check out the notes for each lesson in the Knowable app. Our goal is to help you become more confident at whatever you learn. We've got you. All right, everybody, let's get started. In our first lesson, we're going to talk about why we adults can and should learn like babies. Okay, we're doing it, babies. Let's do this. Let's do this. 